So, <clears throat> welcome to this talk. My name is Lukáš Holček. I've been working with Red Hat for a couple of years, and uh, uh, right now I'm helping uh, OpenShift team uh, to work or uh, better integrate uh, Elasticsearch into the logging component. So, this is this is a short presentation. We have only like 20 minutes, so I really want to make it. Uh, <laughs> We will go fast, there will be no demos, uh, because there is a lot to talk about. And I will try to make sure that we have some time left in the end for the questions. First of all, I will describe a very high level view of uh, what logging is and how, uh, how it fits into OpenShift. Uh, then I will talk about what are the changes of uh, operating and running uh, Elasticsearch inside uh, OpenShift. Of course, we are uh, using Prometheus and Grafana or we are starting using uh, Prometheus and Grafana, even for Elasticsearch. And this conference is about Open Sh OpenShift 4, so uh, you've probably uh, heard the term operator pattern. We also have uh, operator for Elasticsearch. Uh, it's important I will mention that as well. So, uh, very quickly, uh, just uh, notice uh, in advance, most of these charts are very simplified. So, uh, Okay, these days we run applications in containers. Uh, they produce logs, and at some point, those logs end up on file system on the host, on the node, right? And then they are picked, picked up by the collector and shipped directly to the logging stack. Uh, in this case, it, it's, a, it's Elasticsearch. Um, there are some abstractions, uh, probably maybe some of you are familiar with those terms, if not, Containers are running inside a pod. Uh, inside a pod, there can be more containers running. And a collection of pods that somehow you know, belongs together, they run in, uh, in namespace. In, uh, in OpenShift, we use the term project. I believe it's an extension of a Kubernetes namespace. And it's mainly uh, about the, the security. It's important. We will get to that uh, in a minute. And also we have special namespace uh, for logging. Uh, it's called OpenShift Logging, and it's a home to Elasticsearch cluster, all the collectors that are running on individual you know, hosts. Uh, there are other components like Kibana, Curator, and some other. Uh, those are not important for this talk. Okay, so what does it take to run Elasticsearch cluster inside, uh, inside OpenShift? Um, when I was thinking about it, I think every challenge uh, or problem can fall in one of, one of those three categories. So one of them is the data model. It's, it's, it's the model of your data, of your log data. It can be uh, you know, a scalability challenge for Elasticsearch as well. We will talk about it. The other one is, uh, is the environment where the Elasticsearch is running. Uh, is the physical hardware and is the topology of your cluster. And last but not least, the people. They are very important. Uh, and we will talk about it. So let's talk about the data model. So what can go wrong with the data model or how, why it is so important? Um, so from the beginning, uh, the OpenShift logging started with a very simple model. Uh, we've already mentioned that uh, there are namespaces that you know, groups together, uh, pods that somehow belongs together and Individual users in OpenShift uh, can access or have privileges to see or work with within specific namespaces, which means that we, we're, if you are collecting logs, you really want to make sure that users that have privileges for one namespace cannot see logs from the other namespaces that they do not have privilege for. So what we do is that we create an index in Elasticsearch uh, per project or per namespace. And we cut every, every day we cut a new index. That's a you know, very, very simplified model. Uh, it works well, except it, uh, it has a major challenges. Uh, it can lead to high number of indices, and it can lead to a high number of shards. So uh, those are really uh, scaling issues for, uh, if, if, you do not have, if you do not have a large, uh, Elasticsearch clusters, uh, you know, uh, these things will get you. And if you look into uh, uh, Elastic uh, forums, you will see that uh, this topic is frequently discussed. 
So I guess it's, it's, it's pretty okay to say that if you, those problems are, are known. You know, if, I, I would say if you run into average person on the street and you ask, hey, I have this many shards in this small cluster, they should tell you, hey, this, this, is, this is wrong, it, it will not work. The other problem is uh, something called index mapping explosion. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that. It basically means that uh, if you allow users to introduce their own you know, uh, field names into the, into the model, uh, bad things can happen. Uh, it, it can grow too much and Elasticsearch will suffer again as well. So what we can do about that? Well, there are some, some things that we can do. We can try to reduce number of shards uh, or indices. Um, Elasticsearch has the rollover API that, that can help with that. Uh, we are looking at it, we, we, we are looking at how we can you know, benefit from that. There are some uh, commercial solutions to that, uh, which basically are built around uh, document level security, which means that you should be able to store logs from many uh, namespaces into, uh, into common index, and the security is you know, uh, ensured on a different level not on the index level, but on the lower level. But all those uh, solutions are, uh, I would say, commercial. Basically, their license does not permit us as a Red Hat to redistribute this code. So we cannot use them at the moment. One other solution, uh, what I've saw, is that, okay, if one cluster cannot handle your data well, okay, then uh, let's start another cluster or another cluster, and let's share the load between those clusters. And in the end, I will, uh, I, I would like to mention that this scenario uh, will be possible uh, with uh, Elasticsearch operators. It will be easier to use. So maybe we will try, try that. So another problem of, uh, category of problems is really about performance and operational tuning. Uh, so what is really important is what the hardware that your Elasticsearch runs on uh, is really important. Uh, you need fast local storage. If you do not have fast local storage, at some point you will probably suffer, right? Um, the other in, uh, important thing is topology of your cluster. Uh, so far we've been using quite simple model where every node can do anything. There, are, if you are familiar with uh, Elasticsearch ter terminology, you know probably that you can run a uh, node uh, as a master, as a data node and things like that. So uh, it's really recommended to, um, if, you, if you want to have better performance, better stability, and you have a lot of data to uh, have dedicated master nodes, for example. So, so the to topology will, will, will be laid out like that. Uh, okay, uh, that's known, but of course, if, if, if the topology is like that, uh, it can be more complicated to operate this cluster and manage, right? So we will get to that in a minute. Uh, so at this, at, uh, at this area of problems, I would say what's very really important is to have a monitoring and alerting. Again, there are commercial solutions, we cannot distribute them as a part of OpenShift, so we either have to build our own or use some other third party solutions. And that's where exactly Prometheus and Grafana falls in. We will get to that. Okay, last but not least, uh, the cluster will be managed by some people, uh, by real people. Uh, and those people usually know their job very well, but they may not be experts on Elasticsearch, right? So the thing is that uh, if you ask these people to do upgrades for you or do maintenance for you or do troubleshooting for you, you probably uh, should make sure that they have good tools for that and that they know how to use them, right? So let's jump into the Prometheus. Uh, we like Prometheus, I like it as well. Uh, I will probably not, uh, I, I do not want to introduce what Prometheus is. I, I guess uh, you probably should know it. Uh, it has many nice features. Uh, now, when uh, you, you want to allow Prometheus to scrape Elasticsearch metrics, how to do that? Uh, well, Elasticsearch does not, out of the box, support this scenario, right? Because it does not export metrics in Prometheus, format, uh, in Prometheus format, right? So in uh, Prometheus world, 
uh, there are two, uh, I would say, uh, patterns how to deal with the situation. First is that you use something called Prometheus exporter. So it's, it's basically another process. It's like proxy. It knows how to pull uh, metrics from Elasticsearch, transform it into Prometheus metric, and ship it into Prometheus. The other option is to extend Elasticsearch itself. So Elasticsearch has a plugin model, so it, it's possible to implement a plugin that you can you know, plug into Elasticsearch and it will expose the metrics in Prometheus format. So and just, uh, I, I want to, to, to see what kind of audience I have here. Uh, I know that the, there exists Prometheus exporter that is implemented in Go and there is uh, Elasticsearch plugin for Prometheus that is of course implemented in Java. So what would be your preference? What you would like to use? So who would like to go with go, with go basically? Who would like to go with the Prometheus exporter? Okay. And who would prefer the Java solution? Oh. Yeah, okay, maybe you are JBoss guys. <laughs> Not because of Java, right. Uh, I prefer the Java solution as well. Okay, I'm Java developer. I've been using Java for a lot of, uh, a lot of years, but th <coughs> that's not the point. Uh, I think uh, when you use Java uh, and native Java plugin, it has uh, several advantages. So well, let's, let's briefly talk about it. Um, when you implement plugin for uh, Elasticsearch, especially if you want to expose metrics, you really have to talk to internal and quite lo low level APIs. Uh, is this an advantage? Well, it's definitely hard. Uh, it's definitely hard, but the advantage is that, uh, you know, Java is strongly typed language, and when any change is introduced uh, within, you know, even internals of Elasticsearch, uh, you will know that because when you, you know, download new version of Elasticsearch and you will try to compile your uh, plugin, you know, you will know, hey, something, something has changed. Cool. Uh, that's, that's very important. The other thing that is very important is uh, implementation of integration tests. Uh, I've, been, I've been looking at this uh, Prometheus export implemented in, in Go and I haven't found any tests at all. Maybe there are, I, I, I was just blind. But Elasticsearch uh, developed their own framework to test uh, plugins and, and it's really great. I mean, it has disadvantages that the documentation about uh, around that is not, <laughs> I mean, how to say it, it's, uh, I would like to see uh, more documentation around that. But anyway, once you go through this and you learn how to use it, uh, it can do really great things for you. So. What currently the Elasticsearch plugin that is implemented in Java does is, is that it, it has a set of integration tests that are directly, uh, you, you can directly run them from uh, Gradle. And the tests will do the thing that it will really instantiate, uh, you know, uh, Elasticsearch processes. You can tell, okay, uh, you know, start two or three nodes for me. It will deploy the plugin into, into those uh, Elasticsearch, plugin, uh, Elasticsearch nodes. And it, it has great support for uh, you know, running the REST, uh, REST tests. Uh, I, I really like it because I've, uh, I've started using this Elasticsearch plugin and I implemented a lot of, a lot of tests on that level. It's, it's really great because whenever, again, whenever anything changes, you will learn that. I don't know how you can do the same with uh, Prometheus Exporter. You will have to implement it yourself. You can do that, of course. Um, Okay, the, the last thing that I would like to mention is that uh, exposing Elasticsearch metrics in a Prometheus format may not be always that straightforward. I've learned that at some point I, I needed to expose a uh, metric. You know, Elasticsearch uh, has this feature that when a node disk fills up, you can set up specific thresholds and Elasticsearch, uh, first, it stops allocating new shards into those nodes. If, if the disk consumption grows, it will start deallocating or reallocating those uh, shards out of the node. I mean, th the cluster still works perfectly and the operator may not you know, even notice that something is happening, but I think you really want to know that this is happening because uh, it can really buy to later. And 
with uh, Prometheus alerting in OpenShift, what we are trying to do is uh, we, we are trying to be proactive. So we do not want to wait until something you know, breaks. We, we want to let you know in, a, in advance. However, if you look at how this metric is exposed, you will learn that uh, users can change them on the fly and that this metric can basically use two different units. It can be expressed either in percentage or in bytes. Uh, if you think about that, it's, it's not that easy to directly export this into Prometheus. Prometheus will not like that. So you, will, you, you need to do something extra with those metrics. And it's quite easy to do it in Java. Again, you have to dive into uh, low-level APIs and handle that. And it's good that, that then you have the control over it. Okay. Grafana. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, Grafana dashboard for Elasticsearch. It's, uh, yes, it's exposing or it's consuming most of the, or a lot of the metrics that are exposed by the Prometheus plugin. Not all of them, we are just, you know, adding things as we see fit and uh, also, uh, you know, it's open source. So uh, we'll, we will be help, uh, we will be glad if uh, you can join it and, you know, contribute, it's, it's open. How it's done? Uh, there is concept of mixings. I'm not sure if you have heard about it. There is Kubernetes mixings, and we build Elasticsearch mixings on top of that. What it is, it's basically a bundle of Prometheus recording rules, alerting rules, and Grafana dashboards. So it's, it's built on JSONnet, which is templating language, and uh, it uses some other libraries. This is quite low level, but, uh, you know, maintaining and building uh, Grafana dashboards that are huge JSONs, uh, it, it's, it's not a good idea to do it directly in JSON. So JSON uh, helps with that a lot. Currently, you can find this bundle at, at this URL. The location will likely change in the future. Okay, last but not least, Elasticsearch operator. Very quickly, uh, I do not want to go into details. Uh, I, I haven't implemented the operator myself. Uh, it's, it's, it's been done by my colleagues. But anyway, in OpenShift, there is a new space uh, where all the operators live. And this operator right now, uh, so specifically Elasticsearch operator, is responsible for setting up and starting Elasticsearch cluster. So you have this Elasticsearch custom resource, and you describe how your cluster should look like, and it will start the cluster for you. So the advantage here is that uh, now it, it will be much more easier to start more clusters. So we can possibly share the load or um, uh, start clusters with a different topology. Again, thanks to the Elasticsearch operator, this will be much more easier. And it will be also much more easier for the people that operate the cluster to maintain it. Uh, I've been talking about Elasticsearch mixing. So in OpenShift, there lives also the OpenShift monitoring namespace where the, uh, where the Grafana, Prometheus, and Alt Manager lives. And Thanks to some magic, uh, I do not understand it, this magic yet, but if your project like OpenShift uh, logging contains uh, specific objects that contain the dashboards and the rules, uh, they are picked up and they should be you know, injected into Grafana and Prometheus. So, so the integration should be quite, quite easy. And it opens a couple of uh, you know, new uh, opportunities going forward. I mean, the running Elasticsearch, top, different Elasticsearch top, top, topologies, sorry, uh, and or shipping uh, the logs to completely different, you know, I would say target. Some customers or users uh, just want to ship it into their own uh, in-house logging or into, not into Elasticsearch, but into Q or not ship it the logs anywhere, maybe, I don't know. So. That's all I had for today. Uh, if you have any questions, please, now it's your time. Yes. So the question was if there is 
if Elasticsearch can close uh, old indices for you so that you do not have to delete them, but still they are available. Yeah, based on the pattern. Uh, well, uh, Elasticsearch can close indices, so it, it shouldn't be a, a hard job to implement this job for you. Okay, so find all the indices with this pattern and close them. Yeah, that would be possible. But, but you know, uh, still it's, the goal is not to have a lot of indices, uh, gazillions of indices in Elasticsearch. So. Right, so if you need auditing and, and things like that, uh, that's a different topic. Uh, I, I personally do not look at Elasticsearch as, as a system where you can you know, long, -term, long term store your rec records that you need for auditors. I would probably export it to some different storage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if uh, it will be used for logging, if it's, you know, in our use case, because, you know, OpenShift just, you know, if it provides you logs for last two days, it's probably enough. If you want to archive them, maybe use different system. Yeah, you are welcome. Any other questions, please? That's it. So, thank you.